Hi everybody! Hey. Welcome to episode 13. Unlucky 13. Okay. It's going to be a good episode though. <laughs> of Web Analytics TV and we've got an exciting announcement for the 13th episode. There it is. So this time we're going to introduce the new Ninja program. <laughs> and it, <laughs> That's the Ninja Chop part of the new uh, Ninja program that we're going to be. Uh, so the idea is that we're getting great questions from people. Uh, some of them are even better than others, and we want to encourage more people to submit fantastic questions. So now, for every episode, we're going to rank them, and we're going to select one lucky person to be the anal analysis ninja of the episode. Yes. And so what we'll do is uh, when we select you, we'll send you a signed copy of Avinash's book, uh, personalized to you uh, in gratitude for your fantastic analysis questions. So, 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 at the end of this episode, we're going to announce who the winner will be, and your challenge will be to go find my email address and send me your email with your mailing address so we can get a copy of the book to you personalized. Um, and we will announce the winner at the end of this exciting, short, and exciting episode. There we go. So, with that, Nick, the first question goes to you. Okay. And it comes from James Jean London. Hello, London. When I'm creating an advanced segment, I can only combine, for instance, A or B and C or D. Why can't I have A and B or C and D? This is a good question. I'll just make it a little bit more practical. What James uh, wants to do is he wants to say, uh, create a segment that says, um, segment out people who are from California and Arizona or from New York and New England. So, so that's the segment he wants to create. And at the moment, I believe it's not possible to do this within Google Analytics itself. That's right. So the OR operator has a precedence in advanced segments. So the actual combination you can do, you can't do it as one segment. You rather, you'd have to have multiple segments, export the data, combine the data maybe in the CSV or Excel, and then you'll have the aggregation. Uh, the solution, of course, is then to automate all that work using the exactly. API. Exactly. And uh, we actually just worked with a company um, who actually did this automation for regions. Mm -hmm. They have a product called Target Towns. We'll link to it. Uh, and we also have a, a blog post describing kind of how they were able to automate um, using the API to, to get at this data. So again, you can't do it by default through advanced segments today, you have to do separate segments to, to, to get this. Exactly, and, and we'll link to the blog post that will tell you exactly how to do this with our API. Um, and uh, just look for it at the end of the blog post that contains this video, and I think you'll be set. Great, so uh, next question is for you, Avinash. This is from Amanda in Southern California. Nick and Avinash, love your show. Keep up the great work. Thank you. We love you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, my question is in regards to the negative press Web Analytics has been getting lately. <laughs> is there a way to tell how many visitors to your site are using the opt-out <laughs> plugin? Amanda is asking us the question about how to do the thing that the negative press yeah, yeah, is yeah. about. How to track the people who are opted out of tracking. <laughs> so how do you do that? <laughs> All right, Amanda, you can't do that because they already opted out. So. They're opted out. <laughs> um, but all kidding aside, we, we want to make sure we're, G Google gives a very strong privacy plugin based opt out, not a fake third party based, uh, cookie based opt out. We give a very strong plugin based opt out. And if you're opted out of Google Analytics tracking, the, you are opted out and we respect your decision to be opted out. And in that sense, those people are not trackable. I do want to address the first part of your question, Amanda, which was very good, which is we're getting a lot of bad press, again, as a whole, as an industry. And one thing you can do, the one thing for sure that you can do, is have a very clean privacy policy on your website, an understandable English privacy policy. Um, go work with a vendor that you are using. All the vendors you're using on your website understand all the things that they're tracking on your website for the visitors who come, and then lay out in a very clean English, understandable way what you are tracking. Uh, you're not tracking PII, you are tracking PII, you're hacking into browser histories to read illegal things, and that, that might not totally be above board. Transparently highlight that in English in your privacy policy. If you, if you want to see a small example of that, you're welcome to go to my blog, scroll all the way to the footer, you'll see a link to privacy, click on it, and you'll see my in English privacy policy that makes it very transparent exactly what I track. And the great thing is by exposing 100% what I'm tracking, in fact, I am gaining the trust of people who come to my website. And in some sense, in a very tiny way, we negate some of the bad press because of this transparency. So I encourage you, as well as all our video watchers, to go revisit their privacy policy, policy and be transparent. That should reduce some of this bad press connected at least directly to your company. Great, great answer. So um, let's go to the next question from Shalindra in Hyderabad. 
Um, if we add both Urchin code, that's Urchin JS, and Google Analytics code using the set local remote server method call, um, then how will it affect Google Analytics and Urchin tracking? I tried this a couple times. In some cases, Google Analytics reports while Urchin doesn't. So this is a really question about using Urchin and Google Analytics together. Exactly. And, and um, so Google Analytics is a software as a service solution, which is everything is hosted at Google. All your data is here. You can have access to the web and et cetera, et cetera. Urchin is a solution that is in-house and self-hosted, which means you buy the ser a solution from Google. It can host it inside, in your data center, behind your firewalls, with all privacy, whatever you want to be doing it. So we've got two solutions for you to use, choose from. And you should be able to implement both at the same time on the same websites without harming one or the other's capacity to collect data. So that's really, really cool. In your case, Shalendra, um, from Hyderabad in India, if you notice that you are seeing some issues by doing this, um, then it is not that the, the tools are not built to work with each other. Um, they are. Uh, it is possible some configuration issue um, that might be happening on the site or at your end. In which case, I highly recommend that you hire one of our very, very well qualified GACs to help you diagnose the issue. A list of our Google Analytics and Urchin authorized consultants uh, can be found at www.bit.ly forward slash GAAC. If you go to the URL, you'll find a consultant who'll help you diagnose your issues very effectively. Great. So uh, since you're answering these questions so well, here's another <laughs> one for you. Here's a question from Sashant in New York um, about tab browsing. So how is tab browsing tracked in Google Analytics? So for example, a visitor has opened multiple tabs within the browser, and the, view, the visitor is viewing multiple web pages associated with the website. So how are visits and page views calculated, and are browser cookies specific to the tabs? All right, let me take the first part, and then we'll have Nick cover the last part of it. Um, so if you, uh, it, it, this is a scenario where there is some uniqueness across browsers and across web analytics solutions. It can actually get a little bit complicated. So let me just tell you how it happens most of the time for most of the web analytics solutions in browsers. Um, and what happens is every time um, somebody comes to your website and opens a page, whether it's in the, in the first page they landed or in a new tab, every time that happens, a hit goes back um, to the web analytics solution. Uh, literally, it's called a hit. And the hit carries with it a timestamp. So as, as people come to your homepage, let's say they open a tab to the iPhone page, uh, and then actually, open a page uh, for the iPod, and then from the iPod page, they go to the iPod accessories page, and now they decide to go to the iPhone page, which is not, elect not linked, by the way, from the iPod accessories page. And from the iPhone page, they're going to the, uh, to the iPad page. So they've done this sort of mishmash of experiences in two different uh, tabs. What the web analytics solution will do is it will collect all the hits that are coming in, and then it will sessionize them, which, is, which means simply that they will organize it in the order of the timestamp on the hit. So it will look like people went from the home page to the i iPad page, uh, sorry, iPod page to the iPod accessories page to the iPhone page and then the iPad page. So that, that's how it will look. Now, some of these pages might not actually be interlinked, but because they were viewed in different browsers in that order, that's kind of what's going to be shown in your web analytics solution. So be aware um, of how these things get sessionized. It's by timestamp and it'll be organized as a visit and presented to you. And in the case of cookies, uh, Nick? Right, so uh, Google Analytics uses a first-party cookie to track uh, visitors. Yep. Um, so that cookie is specific to the, the domain that sets it. And so in the case of two tabs, they'll be on the same domain, they'll share the same cookie. So the session will still be the same even if they're going across different tabs. Exactly, so the session will be the same. It will stitch together hits by trying timestamps. And the unique visitor will be the same right. because of the domain cookie, the first-party domain cookie. Absolutely. Exactly. Great, great. Thank you, Nick. Uh, the next question comes from Mario in Schuttenberg, Hamburg. And uh, Mario says, does the website optimizer have AB variants appear as direct traffic in Google GA uh, report? Uh, first, I saw high bounce rate, then direct traffic, and thought, fine, they bookmarked me. Uh, thank you for your TV show. Um, so thank you, Mario. Um, there is a little nuance in terms of how A-B tests are implemented um, within, Google, uh, within Google Website Optimizer, and then for them to be tracked within Google Analytics, you have to do the implementation just right. And rather than trying to explain it to you in this TV episode, it's slightly complicated, we're going to go find our friend Trevor. And we're going we're gonna to add a link at the end of the blog post uh, where this video is, um, is being shared with you uh, that will tell you exactly how to implement it so this issue of direct traffic 
doesn't happen for your website optimizer experiments within Google Analytics. So, so look for the link um, in the blog post, Mario. Uh, the next question is for you, Nick, and it comes all the way from Egypt. Wow. Um, from Ab Abdo, Abdo in Egypt. Egypt. We Very should good. go there one day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to meet Abdo. Yeah. Um, hi, Nick and Avinash. Um, actually, <laughs> this is funny. It says, hi, Avinash and Nike. <laughs> my name is my, my name, right, but Nike. Okay, Nike. <laughs> I want to install um, a VLC tool which I can integrate with Google Analytics. I have used the 4Q survey before, but they've disabled the Google Analytics integration. Uh, do you do you have another voice of um, customer tool that I can integrate with Google Analytics, Nick? That's a great question. So uh, VLC, that's voice of customer. So that's survey type information, exactly. uh, qualitative information. So um, we're working with 4Q to help them fix their implementation and get that working again. There's another company called Campile. We'll link to it from our post who also has a voice of customer integration with analytics, you might want to take a look at that as well. Exactly, and then Compile provides a page level survey solution, which is good for certain types of things, and 4Q and other um, uh, solutions provide a site level survey solution, which may, is good for other things. So they tend to be slightly different solutions in terms of the VOC that you'll be able to collect, but Compile does integrate with Google Analytics, and just go to kampyle.com and review the solutions, and perhaps that is the right one for you. Another one for you, Nick, and this one's from Scotty, currently refueling at the Sheraton in Stardock. So some cute people here. Yeah. Um, does the async code execute faster than document.write speed? And are there are there currently any other vendors with JavaScript that can um, be faster than this solution? No, so it's a, it's a good question. So there's a little, um, we, we should clarify. So async allows the JavaScript to run uh, to not block the page from loading. It'll run in the background to load the actual JavaScript. It's very cool. So it loads it in the background, but when it executes, it still has to execute. So the, the execution of the code is mm -hmm. still the same speed. Yes. It's not going to be faster or slower. It's just the perceived latency that the end user sees is a lot smaller because the whole page is not waiting for this JavaScript to load. Now, it actually has a couple benefits, which is really interesting, is that uh, if for some reason you can't get the JavaScript file, like the servers go down, you know, there's a, a bomb that goes, uh, I don't know, if you can't get the file, um, the end page will still render properly. And that's really nice because that way people won't, you know, if it blocks, like if you use a different vendor solution, potentially if their code doesn't load, that way people can't use your website. So we think it's really, uh, you know, definitely, if you haven't moved over to async, you should definitely do so. Exactly, and the, 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 I do know that as, the, as we moved from uh, Jira, uh, the old solution, uh, to async, uh, the, the script was optimized a little bit, so it's a little bit faster for sure. But the main benefit of async is it doesn't interfere with the page, it actually loads from the head, which means it actually collects more data more accurately uh, for your websites. And if you've not moved already to async, we highly, highly recommend you pause this video immediately and move to async because it brings many benefits with it. We should also say there's a lot of other tools at Google that are also moving to async type exactly. code as well. So Because of the benefits. Because of the benefits, yeah. Exactly, including ad serving, I think. Yeah, exactly. Moving to async, yeah. We're pioneering. Okay. Yeah. So we've. Uh, so here's a, a question for you here, uh, oh, Avinash. Yes. Um, I've been trying to send Google Analytics tracking pixels. Um, if you have opted out of GA tracking, is it impossible to monitor them? So this is a very similar question that we, we answered answer before. For Amanda. So, for, so the answer for Captain Kirk of the Earth Metrics Federation training camp um, is that if, if people have opted out of being tracked, then they are opted out of being tracked, and you won't be able to track them. And, and we believe in very strong uh, privacy and, and uh, respecting the choice that the consumers um, have made in that scenario. Uh, here's a question for you, Nick, from uh, Jury in the Netherlands. And it says, when I use a filter, for example, on campaign level, um, why does this filter get removed when I use the back button in my browser when using Google Analytics? Um, and, when I, and also when I use the breadcrumbs, which are on top of the report, mm -hmm. uh, it would save me quite a lot of time if Google Analytics would remember my filters. Um, is this at all possible? Yeah, that's a great question. So what, what he's talking about is that in any of the reports, you can actually filter the reports. Oh, the advanced filter at the bottom. At the bottom of the right, report, right? right, right, right. Um, and so currently when you set up one of those filters, we don't save it. So oh. they only when you go to a different page, they, yeah. they disappear. Yeah. So it's a it's a great feature request. We'll send that back to the team. It probably exactly. can save a lot of people a lot of time. Exactly. But currently, yeah, they are not saved. They're only on the fly yeah. that you can apply them. I think that most of the most of the, the initial reason for for them to be built, you know, my my, my vision was that I, I use the phrase inline analytics, which is you're actually doing um, analysis and filtering in line within the context of the table that you are at. And 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 in that sense, when you hit the back button, you're moving away from that inline analytics sort of. Um, um, 
a mental model and it, it kind of breaks. But I think it's a great feature request to be able to save it and apply it to other things. Yeah. I, I think it's a fabulous request from Jury Netherlands. Great. So uh, here's a question for you, Abhinash. Um, so this is from Mark, and it, it goes like this. Hi, AK. It's Mark, the impolite West Australian <laughs> again. <laughs> All right. Uh, my custom report for unique visitors show 42,000, but the number shown in Google Analytics default unique visitors is 18,000. So how can there be 250% <laughs> difference for what is essentially the same report, or is it? Yes, and, and actually, as it turns out, Mark, it is not the same metric that you're looking at. Um, this is very unfortunate, but at the moment, temporarily, there are actually three uh, metrics that represent unique visitors within Google Analytics. There's the absolute unique visitors uh, metric. There's a visitor metric that you'll bump into in a few places, and then the unique visitor metrics, which is available in custom reports. And uh, you should ignore the other two, and you should actually focus on the unique visitor report in the custom reports, because it is a the, the, the metric that is built the correct way. You can apply it across arbitrary time periods. You can even actually compute unique visitors to a page, to a page which well. is something that you actually can't do with many web analytics tools out there in the market. Yeah. So, uh, so the right number in your scenario is actually the 42,000 number. Uh, so my encouragement to you and all our patient, patient analysis ninjas um, is that you should just use the unique visitor metric in the custom report, ignore the others. Um, at some point one of these days, we're going to flush out the other two, so, so, so your life will be a bit better. But please focus on custom reports, unique visitors. It's a beautiful metric. You should use it every single day. Great. Um, so you answered that one so well. Here's another question for you, Avinash. Um, I've added live chat to my site. Is Google Analytics able to track new live forms? This is great. I, I, I love this question. I, I am very, very big proponent of tracking many different kinds of microconversions on websites. And indeed, there are solutions in the marketplace that uh, have chat features that integrate with Google Analytics. One of the ones that um, I know of for a fact is Live Person, one word, liveperson.com. And a couple of years, over two years ago, Nick, they integrated with Google Analytics. And there's a implementation conf configuration required updates in the Live Person solution, and then configuration required updating within Google Analytics. But you're able to create these beautiful custom reports where you can have the dimension you're interested in, keywords, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, campaigns. And then you can have the visits column, you can have your goal conversion column, so conversion happening on site. And right next to it, you'll see the percent of live chats. It's mm, a really cool. beautiful report. Uh, so you are indeed able to integrate live chats with Google Analytics. And at the end of this blog post, um, Nick will link to, we'll the, link to the solution from li a live person. They will tell you how the report looks within Google Analytics, but they also have a downloadable document that you can use to figure out how they have integrated it. Uh, ideally, you'll use live person and, and it'll solve your uh, problem. But if you don't want perhaps to use them, uh, perhaps their integration will help inspire you mm -hmm. to, to follow something similar uh, with other solutions that you might want to use. So we'll link to that. Uh, but an excellent question. Great. Um, so with that, we've come to the end of episode 13 of Web Analytics TV. We've got to pick a winner for the Ninja nin program. Ninja, <laughs> Ninja of the week for the person with the best question. And for this week, uh, Nick and I unanimously and quickly picked Shushant from New York for his question around tabbed browsing. It was a great question. And I do encourage um, ninjas to sort of dig a little bit deeper and find some of these more complicated issues um, because they are happening increasing on your websites. And every ninja needs to know how this works in the web analytics tool of your choice, whether it's Google Analytics or not. So Sushant, um, it's easy to find my email address. Find it and email me your uh, physical mailing address and some proof that you are this Sushant. Yeah, we don't want 10 Sushant. Yeah. <laughs> Emailing us. And we'll send you a personalized copy of Web Analytics 2.0. Hopefully, that's also encouragement for the rest of you to please go to the moderator site that's linked at the end of this blog post and submit us really great questions about Google Analytics or any challenges that you face in the web analytics field trying to create data-driven organizations. We would love to answer your awesome questions. With that, thank you and happy analysis.